So, what do you think of when you hear the word Lord? A member of an elite club for the rich and heads of business? Or members of parliament with experience of everyday life like teachers or doctors? Let's take a look. Two acts in 1958 and 1999 have ended the right to inherit seats from parents. The majority of the House is now made up of life peers, chosen for their knowledge and experience in politics and legislation, leading in business and industry, and chosen from communities for having made a difference. Today's life peers come from all walks of life, like former charity worker and community leader Lord Adebowale, former film producer, Oscar winner and Labour peer Lord Putnam, community campaigner and conservative peer Baroness Newlove, and former children's television presenter, actress and Liberal Democrat peer Baroness Benjamin. From Oscar winners to Olympic athletes, scientists to crime writers, doctors, actors and rabbis, both political and independent peers bring their skills and passion to the House to spend their time to help shape our laws and make sure the country's well managed. A new way for choosing who's in the Lords is now in place. Since the House of Lords Act in 1999, membership of the Lords is no longer passed down through family. And since 2000, there's an appointments panel, an independent advisory body that helps decide who becomes a non-party political peer. Baroness Grey Thompson, a former Paralympian athlete and the winner of several gold medals, described an interview with the panel as one of the scariest experiences of her life. The goal is to make the House more representative. For the moment, ethnic minorities currently make up a small proportion of the House, and women only make up one in five of the House of Lords. The panel checks nominations from political parties, as well as the public, and helps the Prime Minister choose what the House needs to keep it skilled. And you can even nominate yourself. When you're made a peer, you get to choose your name, like Lord Singh of Wimbledon. What you choose is up to you, provided it hasn't been taken. The Lords are chosen for their experience or knowledge, like medicine or law, skills that can help the country, so they represent areas of interest rather than a region of the country. Have you ever heard people say, the Lords never turn up? Well, many of the Lords think it's important that they only take part in lawmaking when they know about that issue. So, for instance, scientist Lord Winston led the House of Lords Select Committee on Science and Technology and is a world-leading expert on fertility, but wouldn't necessarily take part in discussions on farming, for example. However, he can still vote on a whole range of topics and issues that come into the House of Lords. All peers are currently unelected. In many countries, they elect their upper chamber. So why don't we? There are many pros and cons. The Lords don't have to toe the party line or worry about re-election, as they don't need their party to help them get re-elected. But as peers are for life and don't have to stand for re-election like MPs in the Commons, how can they be held to account? On the flip side, being a peer for life means that by not seeking re-election, they can concentrate solely on policy. How does that affect lawmaking? But what place does an unelected house have in today's democracy? There's a lot to think about, but what do you think of now when you hear the word Lord?